Live from Istanbul, Turkey, it's Trentino versus Fenerbahce, the super match of the week in Pool E, a very important, we could argue, must-win match for both of these great European teams. My name is Rob St. Clair. Thanks very much for joining us live on the CEV YouTube channel and on Eurovolley.tv. Very excited to get into this Pool E matchup. Trentino, last year's runners-up in this tournament. They ran all the way to the finals before losing to Zaksa Ketzerz and Kozle of Poland. Fenerbahce, an absolute mainstay in this competition. One of the great multi-sport clubs oh, okay. in For all of Europe. It's a nice uh, game. It's a good game uh, after the last match uh, in, in our league. Uh, we need this kind of game for the future. It's hard game, it's top team, one of the top team in the world. But we play really good with uh, Perugia and we trust all uh, our best for fight with this uh, top team in the world. We fight, sure. Some nice words there from coach Daniel Castellani, the Argentinian, who is the head man in charge of Fenerbahce. Fenerbahce 1 and 2 in third place in Pool E right now. He mentioned just now the loss recently, their last Champions League match to Perugia. This game is uh, a very important game uh, for us, for Fenerbahce, uh, because uh, in our pool uh, there is a very strong uh, team uh, like uh, Perugia, and uh, the other team uh, uh, fight for the, the second place. 
but the second place is not sure for the qualification. But uh, uh, each team have to win uh, most, uh, most matches uh, to win the possibility to arrive in the second phase. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, you heard it right there from Coach Angelo Lorenzetti of Trentino. This match is extremely important. We'll take a look at the pool standings here in Pool E in just a minute, but both of their coaches referenced Perugia sitting perfectly at the top right now of Pool E. Actually 4-0 and now with their match that was scheduled against Cannes of France to be played tomorrow was forfeited by Cannes, so Perugia now a perfect 4-0 and in the standings as we get into the return leg of matches. These teams have already seen each other once now at this point in the Champions League. Looking here, the captains, the legendary Matej Kaziski of Trentino, Salvador Hidalgo Oliva of Fenerbahce. I believe those two gentlemen played together once upon a time in Qatar uh, in the mid 2010s so nice photo there between the captains and our two officials. Full star power on display here in this match between Fenerbahce and Trentino. We'll get into the lineups that we expect in just a couple moments, but just to continue on that thought of why this match is so important. In the CEV Champions League fourth round, there are 20 teams in five pools of four teams each. The winners of each of those five pools get five of the eight quarterfinal spots automatically. The remaining three spots in the quarterfinals are taken up by the top three ranked second place teams. So in order to have any chance to advance, you must at least get top two in your pool. And that is what's on the line right here as Fenerbahce and Trentino both try to keep pace with Perugia. First place not out of the question for Trentino. If they go undefeated the rest of the way, including beating Perugia head to head, they could take first. Fenerbahce already with two losses right now. The best they could do is second, but that is not out of the question either. However, it starts today with hosting last year's runners up in the competition. A look at the matches to be played at the fourth leg of this pool this week in late January 2022. I mentioned that that match, Perugia versus Khan, scheduled for tomorrow, has been forfeit by Khan and awarded to Perugia. So that match will not be played. Perugia takes a three sets to none victory by default. And there are the standings of the pool. You can see it reflected there with Perugia having played four matches, but the, the fourth one awarded by the forfeit. Perugia a perfect 12-0 in sets, which is unbelievable in a pool this difficult. And there Trentino and Fenerbahce competing hard for second place. These two teams faced off back on December 16th in Trento in Italy. Trentino took that contest three sets to none in three pretty close sets. Very importantly though for Fenerbahce, you just saw him take a swing right there in warm-ups, number six in the famous blue and gold. Mohamed Syed Musabi, one of the great read blockers and very threatening attackers in the entire game of volleyball right now at the middle blocker position, the Iranian. Did not play in that last match, actually didn't play for most of the first half of the season for Fenerbahce working his way through an injury. But Syed is back and he is a huge aspect of this Fenerbahce team, especially considering last time in the middle, the Trentino middle attackers combined, that's Marco Pedrasco and Tresco Ristinats, 10 for 14 combined attacking with no errors. So the middle was a huge strength for Trentino last time. And not only does Fenerbahce get Syed back, but to my knowledge right now, Stresco Lisinats is not in the building for Trentino. We'll have to get that confirmed, but I don't think you will see Stresco Lisinats in this match for Trentino, the visitors. So that likely means that Vout to here the young 20-year-old Belgian will be the second middle blocker. So Trentino weakened in the middle slightly. Fenerbahce strengthened since that last matchup that they had played just about a month ago. Fenerbahce made some nice moves this offseason. They kept Salvador Hidalgo Oliva, of course, a mainstay at the outside hitter position across 
many, many leagues in Europe the last decade. But they bring in Olympic gold medalist Yasin Luati to really strengthen their outside hitter position. So Luati, Hidalgo Oliva combined with Metin Toy at the opposite. That is an elite trio of European wings right there. Toy, number 15 in blue and gold. 44 points in Champions League so far, 38 kills. That's top 10 in both categories. Yassine Luati right behind him. So a lot of production from those wings that like to run really, really fast, providing the level of firepower that you need to keep up with a team like Trentino. And they've been watching Trentino the past couple years, especially last year's Champions League. This team that you're going to see today is completely different. They lose Simone Gianelli, Riccardo Lucarelli, Namir Abdelaziz all out in the transfers in the offseason. But they bring in Ricardo Spertoli at the setter. They keep Alessandro Micheletto. They bring back Matej Kaziski from the Trentino legendary teams of old. And they bring in Daniele Lavia from Modena. And coach Angelo Lorenzetti of Trentino has instituted one of the most unique offensive systems in all of volleyball. Trentino playing without a, tra a traditional opposite on the floor. You will see a three outside hitter system with Lavia, Micheletto, and Matej Kaziski, all three traditional outside hitters, rotating in various different places in the rotation for Trentino. A very interesting offense. So Daniele Lavia will line up opposite the setter, will attack, but won't attack strictly on the right side of court, will kind of move around all over the place. And part of the reason why that lineup works is because of how good of a blocker Daniele Lavia is on both sides of court. Already eight blocks in Champions League so far, tied for fifth in the competition, and normally that that ranking is reserved for middle blockers. So that tells you a lot about how good Lavia is as a blocker, including six blocks. Six blocks in one match the last time these two teams played in December, which is an unbelievable performance. So I really like this Trentino offense. It's very unique, and we'll follow it closely along throughout this match. But now Fenerbahce has seen it once. There is Lavia there right on cue. Fenerbahce now has seen this offensive system once. We'll see if they can adapt the second time around in this matchup. Last but not least, a very significant piece of news coming out yesterday. Fenerbahce seems to have dipped their toes into the transfer market in the midseason and have picked up one of the great setters of all time, Mir Syed Maruf Lakrani of Iran will join Fenerbahce this season, but it is too soon for him to appear in this match. He will not play in this match. So if, you're, if you've heard the news of Marouf's arrival in Fenerbahce, that is big news, but you will not see him today. So the starting setter will likely be Muhammad Kaya, number 17 in blue and gold of Turkey, who started the last match. So it is just about time to meet our starting lineups and see which seven players these two coaches have chosen to start on court in this all-important Champions League matchup. Introducing first our officials up on the stand, Mr. Ari Jokilainen of Finland, down on the ground, Erdal Akunja of Turkey. First, let's introduce the starting lineups of the visitors from Trentino, the runners-up in last year's Champions League competition. No surprises here. Matej Kaziski, the Bulgarian legend, through the outside. Vout to here fills the hole left by Sresko Lisinac in the middle. Alessandro Micheletto, the 20-year-old phenom, along with Daniela Lavia at the outside hitters. So the three outside hitter offense used once again. Marko Pedrashinin, the legendary Serbian, in the middle. And German libero Julian Zenger in the red along with Ricardo Spertoli at the setter, and there is coach Angelo Lorenzetti. For Fenerbahce, I don't expect very many surprises here. Mohamed Syed Musavi in the middle. Emre Batur, number 10, gets the other middle blocker start. That is a little bit of a surprise. Metin Toy, number 15, at the opposite. 13, Salvador Hidalgo Oliva, the Cuban captain. Number four, Yassine Luati at the outside, the Frenchman. And Mohamed Kaya at number 17 is indeed the starting setter with the libero, Hassan Yeselbudak. 
So Emery Botter, number 10, gets the start in the middle over Ahmet Tumer. Interesting choice there, but Syed in the middle, of course. Oh, very interesting. Actually, no Yassin Luati in the starting lineup. It looks like number 8, Izet Unver. 1 meter 94, 29 year old Turkish outside hitter. So we'll see how long that lasts. I would be shocked if Yassin Luati doesn't see significant time in this match, especially given its importance. Coach Daniel Castellani, the head man for Fenerbahce out of Argentina. We heard it from him before the match. Both coaches really stressing the importance of this one. And for that reason, I am surprised not to see Yassin Luati in the starting lineup. But we will see. So if you're just joining us, no Stresco Lisinac for Trentino. So Vote to Hear gets the start in the middle. Fenerbahce has Syed Musavi of Iran back in the lineup after missing about the first half of the season. We are ready to get underway. Rob St. Clair here bringing you Trentino at Fenerbahce. Trentino in white serving on your left. And a good start. Emre Batur, number 10 in the famous Fenerbahce blue and gold. Gets the home side on the board first out of the middle. Batur, 33 years of age, 2 meters and 2, and he goes back to serve. Good pass there by Micheletto in position 6. Absolutely perfect, and Kaziski absolutely crushed down the line on the right side. My goodness, what a bomb. Matej Kaziski, the Bulgarian legend, 37 years of age, still doing it at the absolute highest level. No, 38, excuse me, 38 as of recently. Good pass there by Hidalgo Oliva. Gets a quick ball on the outside. Good off-speed shot, somehow rescued. What a save. Middle attack by Syed, missed out of bounds. What an incredible scramble. Wow, a, a spectacular reaction by Trentino on that off-speed shot by Salvador Hidalgo, and they're able to take a point out of it on the hitting air out of the middle. Pretty spectacular play there. Kaziski again. Not a good pass here from Hidalgo. He'll get not a system swing against three blockers. High off the fingertips, and it deflects out of bounds. Well, Trentino insists right now that they did not touch it. But it looked pretty clear to me that that deflected off the hands. It looks like we will see our first challenge of the match. Point awarded to Trentino initially, but Fenerbahce wants to take a look at this on the replay. Both teams get two video replay challenges per set. If you win your challenge, you keep it. So you can effectively challenge infinitely as long as you keep getting them right. challenge system has become such an important part of volleyball in the last six or eight years. You, uh, you don't see players being able to get away with lying about block touches or anything like that anymore. And that is pretty clearly right off the very tip of Marco Pedrashman's left middle finger. So a micro touch, but a touch nonetheless. And Trentino does take that point. They retain their challenge. And we're tied at two all here in set number one. Metin Toy, the 27-year-old opposite, number 15 in blue and gold, an extremely important player for Fernabache. Good serve, well handled by Zenger. Lavia tipped on the right side into the floor. Libero Yesel Guduk of Istanbul unable to make that play. Marko Podrashanin, the legendary Serbian who just achieved his 1,000th block in his Superliga career, which is incredible. And there's Syed out of the middle, a much needed return presence. Syed, number six in blue and gold, two meters and three, 34 years of age. Spectacular international career with the Iranian national team. Actually played in Italy last year with Piacenza, so knows some of these Trentino players very well. Here is the 36-year-old Fenerbahce captain. Salvador Hidalgo Oliva also played all over the world. Micheletto over the top of the block and perfectly in the deep corner in position five. That is an absolutely unstoppable swing by the young 20-year-old superstar Italian who had one of the great years really of all time, especially from a 19-year-old in the year 2021 with Trentino and the Italian national team. Not a good pass there. Toy able to run it down. Trentino's gonna get a free ball out of this. Spertoli, to here out of the middle. Cross body deflected by the block into the floor and vote to here. 
number three in white, another young player that Trentino picked up this offseason. 20 years of age, two meters and three of Belgium. Leaving the Belgian domestic league for the first time and it's seen a pretty decent amount of playing time for Trentino this Italian season. Toy out of the back row. Good dig down the line by Zinger. Micheletto high off the fingertips again, and then Trentino has been outstanding in transition so far. Such a smart swing by number five in white right there. At two meters and 11, a like, super-sized outside hitter and left-handed, just so unique. We've been calling him the unicorn of volleyball this year. Good play there by the setter, Mohamed Kaya, and a carry is called against Micheletto of Trentino saying that after he lost that joust, he held that ball a little bit too long as he scooped it upwards. And I agree with that call on the replay. Even Micheletto certainly does not. Fenerbahce back within two. Here is Sayed, the 34-year-old, back to serve. That ball looked to be inbounds, called out by the up official. But we very well may see a challenge on this. I think Fenerbahce really believes that that caught a piece of the end line. <laughs> Salvador Hidalgo Oliva can't believe it. Uh, I had a great time chatting with Salvador. Uh, we had him on the European Volleyball Show, which I also host for the CTV. That is a perfectly located ace serve right on the end line. But Salvador joined me on the European Volleyball Show earlier in the season to talk about some of the matches in Pool E and his Fenerbahce season. A great guy, a ton of personality, and I love watching him play. Beautiful serve there from Syed. Fenerbahce already two for two on challenges, and they trail by one here in this first set of our best three out of five set match. That might be another one. Ball called out of bounds, and I don't believe we'll see a challenge this time. Micheletto listed at 207, definitely taller than that. Off the tape handle pretty well. Toy out of the back row, dug by Micheletto, but out of play. Really good offense right there. Facilitated by number 17 in blue and gold, Muhammad Kaya. 26 years of age, 1 meter 90, the setter for this Fenerbahce side, at least while they wait for Maruf of Iran's arrival. And there is Kaya back to serve. Good left-handed jump spinner. Dumped to the floor on two by Ricardo Spertoli. What a beautiful choice by number six in white. Ricardo Spertoli, a big off-season pickup for Trentino. Big shoes to fill, replacing the great Simone Gianelli. But Spertoli had a really good year with Milano last season. Only 23 years of age. has seen really high-level international play, both for the Italian national team and in the club scene. He's had a good season for Trentino so far, facilitating this unique offense. Tight pass, Toy tipped over the top in rotation one. Kaziski will have a swing in transition, and he just barely misses it out of bounds, deep cross court. Not a bad swing at all by Matej Kaziski, but just barely missed the sideline and the end line. And the surprise starter, in my opinion, Izet Unver, number eight in blue and gold for Fenerbahce, the outside hitter. Back to serve. La Via out of the back row. Number 15 in white, Daniele La Via. We talked about his blocking prowess as being such an important part of this unique three outside hitter offense for Trentino, but his ability to score on the right side from the front and the back court in not every rotation, but certainly most of them, has been really important for this Trentino team this year. Smart choice by Toy, jam through the block, but, but Micheletta recovers nicely. Kaziski now on the right side. Puts it away through the block and down. That is such good out of system transition offense from Trentino. And in this do or die, pretty much a do or die match for both of these teams. Fenerbahce is going to have to score as, as efficiently as possible inside out when they get a pretty good pass. Unable to do so on that last point, but they get out of that rotation the easy way with the service error. So eight serving 10 in this first set of our best three out of five set match to 25 points. You must win by two. Pipe attack to Micheletto. Beautiful defensive positioning, but couldn't be controlled by Unver. 
And Micheletto just... The unicorn of volleyball is such a perfect nickname for him. Like, you just do not see players that are 2 meters and 11 and left-handed and can control the ball that well and play the outside hitter position, and especially at 20 years of age. What a bomb down the line there by Hidalgo. Nice cross-body rip by number 13 in blue. Yeah, Micheletto earned the nickname the unicorn playing in Volleyball Nations League into the Olympics this past summer for Team Italy, and it has stuck and for good reason. Here's Toy. That missed just out of bounds into the scene. And when these two teams played last time, surface pressure was a big part of the story. Both teams had seven aces in that last match, three sets in December. Seven aces for a team in three sets is a lot. And both teams were able to put that up compared to only 10 errors. That ratio is pretty good. Huge block right there. Beautiful move by Vota here to close it on Trentino's left side with Lavia there as well. And we've talked about Daniele Lavia's blocking prowess. Fifth in the entire Champions League in blocks coming into this match, and it looked like he got all of that one. The fact that he can be such a threatening blocker on both sides of the court is an unbelievable luxury for Trentino combined with their tremendous middle blockers. Good read there by Spertoli on the off, on the off speed. Lavia sharp cross court dug by Hidalgo. Good reset and block there by Hidalgo. Another opportunity here for Fenerbahce. Toy out of the back row is stuffed again. Plus a three meter attack line violation. So Toy stepping on the attack line. That ball was given that point was given up immediately as he jumped to attack that ball. But you better believe that stuff block from Lavia that happened anyway. It's gonna be in his head. Another, I mean, Lavia unfortunately won't get a block in the stats for that because the violation was committed before, but Mentally, that block certainly counts, and Fenerbahce needed timeout here, now trailing by five all of a sudden. Midway through set number one. Unfortunate that the normal, incredible Turkish home crowd looks to be have been mitigated by capacitor, capacitancy limits. Another stuff block right there. Vout to here got all of that one with Micheletto there as well. And Hidalgo is put down as the Trentino block has totally come alive these last three points. Such a strength of theirs. Trentino had 10, 10 stuff blocks in the three set match against Fenerbahce last time in Italy, which is an unbelievable number in three sets. That is a spectacular set from Mohamed Kaya. Hit out of bounds by Toy, but he wants a challenge for a block touch. So we'll see if Fenerbahce gives one here. Yes, they will. They kind of need it with, they don't want to let up this point get away if there's any amount of a chance. And it looks like before we even go to the challenge system, Marco Petrosian is showing some sportsmanship and admitting to the block touch. So Fenerbahce will take that point. That's just another thing that's happened since the replay system has gotten so good at catching block touches is if you're the blocker and you know you touched it, replay's gonna catch it. So you might as well just submit to it and save everybody some time. La Via missed it out of bounds on the right side and that one to me did not look like it touched the block. So an important point there on the serve of Fenerbahce and Hidalgo, one of the most dangerous servers in all of Europe. Back to the line once again. Hidalgo had four aces by himself in that match against Trentino in December. That might be one right there, and yes it is, right on cue. Salvador Hidalgo Oliva lights it up on the speed gun and gets the better of Julian Zenger that time. Beautiful rip by the veteran Cuban. Yeah, this is just a bomb right at Zenger's midline, but too hot to handle. Fenerbahce could use a lot more of that. 12 serving 15. Not a bad trip to the line despite that service error, but Trentino's lead now comfortably back up to four.
looks to be rotation to receive here for Fenerbahce. Kaya to Unver. Good swing there. He's at Unver with his first point of the match. High off the inside part of the block and out of bounds. So we'll see how long Yuzet Unver can keep his place on court. A very good start for him. But again, I'm surprised not to see Yassin Luati, the Olympic gold medalist, get the start at the other outside for Fenerbahce. Here's Syed. Missed that one well out of bounds. Definitely tossed it too far out in front of him. See how long it takes for either of these teams to really run that quick pipe combination as an in-system option. We saw it once from Micheletta for Trentino. It's important for Fenerbahce as well. Toy out of the back row is stuffed again. This time Matej Kaziski gets it. But Vauta here as well. I think that may have been going out of bounds, but deflected off of Toy on its way. So another stuff block for Trentino. That's their third of the set. And could have been four if it weren't for a three-meter attack line violation taking one off the stat sheet. But Fenerbahce now needs to use their second and final team timeout of this first set. Oh, beautiful move by Matej Kaziski. And yeah, that might just be unlucky because I think that ball may have been headed wide of the sideline but caught Toy on the lower leg on its way out of bounds. Trentino leads by five. Let's listen to Coach Castellani here in the timeout. I just can't, I can just barely not make out what Castellani's saying, which is a shame because he's coaching in, in English. Castellani, the Italian. And you've got Syed of Iran, Luati of France, Hidalgo Oliva of Cuba, and some Turkish guys that speak good English. So English seems to be the common language, at least as far as coaching for this Fenerbahce team. Good pass there against a tough serve. Micheletta rolled into the block. Good reset. This will be Unver again. This time chopped down the line, dug by Lavia. Connection not quite there for Trentino. Toy out of the back row. Smart tip, but another three-meter attack line violation as Metin Toy stepped on the three-meter attack line as he jumped to attack that ball out of the back row. So a missed opportunity there as Trentino looked a little bit out of sorts in transition offense. Now their lead is back up to six. Micheletto now, no reason not to unleash. Unver rolled over the top of the block. Well played by Dahir. Wow, incredible reset there from Kaziski off an almost impossible set and Micheletto out of the pipe. That was unbelievable. Lavia was laying on the ground and one-handed slapped that ball from his backside to a hittable position for Kaziski. That's crazy. Kaziski with a smart reset and Micheletto terminates out of the pipe in transition. That was an incredibly high-level play. And a substitution here, number one, Khan Gurbuz. 20-year-old opposite, 1 meter 99, comes in for Metin Toy. Because this set is definitely slipping away from Fenerbahce here. So, in my opinion, you make that coaching move for one of two reasons. One is to give Toy a break to kind of reset himself mentally to bring him back out for set number two, hopefully in a better mental position. Or you bring in Gurubruz off the bench to get warm to stay in the rest of this match. We will see what Coach Castellani chooses to do. Ball may have been going out of bounds, but played by Zanger pretty well. Kaziski is roofed. What a stuff block. Khan Gurbu is right off the bench, contributing immediately with the stuff block. Emre Batru there as well. That is just what Fenerbahce needed, and even if they're not able to make this comeback, momentum swinging points like that could be huge as we go into the rest of this match, is as important as it is. Spertoli with one hand. What a beautiful feed. And Kaziski takes advantage of the repeat set, puts it away cross court. That is a beautiful delivery from Ricardo Spertoli. Watch this again. Oh, yeah, awesome. Pulled two blockers with that play. Even as a backcourt player, you're still able to freeze the block by going up there with one hand. Overpassed and hammered to the floor by Matej Kaziski off the libero and out of play. Good serving there from Vote to here, forcing the overpass. That's not an ace on the stat sheet, but it is the next best thing. And 
and this limited crowd on hand here in Istanbul has definitely been silenced by the Trentino output so far. Perfect pass there. Ver down the line on the right side. Lavia out of the back row may have been going out of bounds, played defensively. Had a system opportunity here. Kaziski challenges the double block and sharp cross court just barely missed it out of bounds. Apologizes right away, but again, that's not a bad swing. Tried to slice it off, sharp cross court, catch a piece of the sideline, just missed it. I don't, I don't dislike that swing at all from the Bulgarian legend, Matej Kaziski. Here's Unver. Overpass again. Good block deflection by Spertoli. May have been going out of bounds. Gruber is the left-hander with an out-of-system swing. Kept alive by Mikuleta. Kaziski. <laughs> oh, sends that ball into orbit. That ball may be... Um, we might find that in the Mediterranean Sea here in a couple hours. <laughs> That's not a bad swing, though. As funny as it is, that ball's probably on its way into orbit. Kaziski just wanted a piece of the fingertips of the block. It's, he, he, didn't, he wasn't trying to hit that ball into the court. What a serve that is. A nasty float service ace by Izet Udver. And all of a sudden, this first set is not over yet. 22-18. Fenerbahce has definitely given themselves a chance. And a bad miscommunication there between the Trentino receivers. Well-located serve by Udver right into the scene. That one handled much better by Mikoleto. Kaziski on the left side, blocked again, but able to be covered. But then right on the top of the net, Batur takes a swing and misses it out of bounds wide. That is a massive break for Trentino and might be a set deciding play right there. 19-22 uh, is very different than 23-18. And now Spertoli back to serve, looking to serve this first set out. Good feed into the middle. From Kaya to Batur, and he atones for that overpass hit out of bounds. But still, I would say at this point, it would take a miracle for Fenerbahce in this first set. 23-19. Trentino can side out twice and get on the board here in this Champions League Pool E match. Good read by Zanger on the short serve. Lavia crushed through a seam in the block and to the floor to bring up set point for Trentino. Now five opportunities to win this first set. Really interesting, this offense that Trentino runs. I love seeing the creativity in high-level offenses with what is possible with different potential ways to run your offense. That ball by Syed Crossbody was called inbounds on the sideline. So one set point saved for Fenerbahce. Gurubu's the young left-hander, number one in blue and gold. See what he can do from the service line. No reason not to go after this. He does. Handled really well by Zinger. Padrashin in on the back one, right on the end line. And unless we see a challenge from Fenerbahce, that will do it for the first set. And I think there is some indecision of potentially asking for a challenge. Fenerbahce's got some remaining. If it's close at all, you might as well challenge it. And yes, they will. So they're going to look at if that ball did indeed catch a piece of the end line. Looked to be pretty close to me. This is not a really a hopeless challenge in my opinion. This, uh, this could go either way. That ball is in. Beautiful shot by Pedrashinen. Unsuccessful challenge. And that is it. Trentino takes the first set 25-20. They are one step closer to continuing their hopes even their hopes to win this pool. It's still possible for Trentino. They've got to win this match. Step one complete. They win set 125-20. We'll be right back with first serve of set number two. Don't go anywhere.
set number two coming your way live from this Champions Men's League Super Match of the Week. Trentino at Fenerbahce. My name's Rob St. Clair. Thanks very much for watching. Live on a Wednesday evening. Trentino took the first 25-20, and I am very curious to see the lineup that Coach Daniel Castellani chooses for Fenerbahce. So Emre Batua remains in at the middle blocker. Metin Toy back at the opposite, number 15 in blue and gold. Not surprised by that either. Let's see if we can get a look at the other outside hitter. And yes, so Izet Unver remains in the match at outside hitter for Fenerbahce. No Yassin Luati just yet. Fenerbahce will be serving here to start the second set on the left side of your screen. The nice thing for Trentino about this three outside hitter system is that rotation to rotation, they can choose which two of their three outside hitters receive serve. And that ball is crushed out of the middle by Pedrashin and maybe even into the head of Unver, the top of the chest. He'll uh, might have a Mikasa-shaped tattoo on his upper chest when he wakes up tomorrow morning. Spiritually back to serve for Trentino. Tough pass by Hidalgo. Smart off-speed choice, but a beautiful defensive play by Spertoli. La Villa challenges the block sharp cross-court. Out of system swing coming here. Toy cross-court dug by Spertoli. La Villa, beautiful high swing. Down the line off the fingertips of the block and out of the reach of the defense. Such a smart shot by number 15 in white. Who was tremendous winning the European Championship for the Italian national team late last summer, but more importantly has been such a utility player for this Trentino team, hitting and blocking on both sides of the court. Toy absolutely destroyed sharp cross court right on the three meter line. That is a bomb. Toy with a beautiful start to his second set after going to the bench late in the first. Yeah, that is just crushed. No defense in the world going to pick that up. About to wear the middle blocker to serve for Fenerbahce. Love this look from the baseline camera destroyed again out of the middle. My goodness. Marco Pedrashin in two for two already in this second set. These, these teams are exchanging some serious blows right now. Syed, one of the great read middle blockers like in the blocking phase with his hands, the fundamentals so good. Could do nothing to stop that. That one by Hidalgo. Quick tempo off the block and out of bounds. I just love watching Salvador Hidalgo Oliva play. A ton of energy, just tremendous. Great personality. Had him on the European Volleyball Show a month or two ago and was really fun to get to know him. That ball served just barely out of bounds by Toy, but we might have a challenge on this. That ball is in, wow, beautiful. Just barely catches a piece of the end line at the very, very back of it. About as close as it can get, but that's a perfect serve by Metin Toy. And we are tied up at three apiece here in the second set. Fenerbahce's been outstanding on challenges so far in this match. Padrashin in again, this time kept alive. Back to the Trentino side. Micheletto, deep cross court, what a stick. Hidalgo, deep down the line, off the fingertips and out of bounds. Outstanding defensive work by Fenerbahce there. First the dig by Hassan Yesel Budak, the libero number five in white. The second one, Iza Unver in position six. Fenerbahce takes advantage. If they can defend like that, they've really got a chance to hang around in this match. That is just beautiful high-level volleyball right there. Syed on the overpass, slowed down by Pedrashin. La Villa is blocked. Beautiful move by Syed and Hidalgo. I don't know if La Villa saw Syed coming on that one. I thought he had, I think he saw a free cross court to swing at. Syed came out of nowhere. Let's watch this again. 
Yes, absolutely. Beautiful late hands from Syed Musabi. Fenerbahce with a two-point lead and continue a good service rotation. Micheletto off the block and out of bounds. Restores some order for Trentino. Good wrist away swing there off the edge of the block from the left-hander number five in white. And that is definitely a mismatch. Micheletto at two meters 11. Attacking against Fenerbahce's setter, Mohamed Kaya, blocking at one meter 90. So Spertoli will want to exploit that mismatch as much as possible. Good run on the back one to Syed, but kept alive by Kaziski. Lavia, deep cross court. Off of Unver in position six and out of play. Good transition offense again by Trentino. Stop me if you've heard that one before. They are so good at taking advantage of defensive touches and turning them into offense. There's a look at it right there. Pedrashin in again. Good pass. Crushed to the floor out of the middle by Syed. He has made such an impact for this Fenerbahce team since coming back really just a couple weeks ago. The middle attacking presence from anywhere on the floor that he brings. That ball right between the legs of Matej Kaziski. And the blocking like you saw just a couple points ago is exactly why Fenerbahce brought Syed in in the offseason. Now reaping the benefits after he took his time coming back from injury. Good rip there by Hidalgo and it's another ace serve. A laser beam for number 13 in blue and gold from the service line. And Fenerbahce is playing with a ton of energy right now. And the limited but passionate crowd on hand here in Istanbul is loving it. Yeah, perfect serve. Lavia stepping in to pass that ball in position one. Could not handle the heat. Trentino needs timeout. can't overstate the importance of this match for both teams. Trentino must win to have a chance to win this pool. Fenerbahce must win to have a chance to advance out of this pool at all. Another bomb from Hidalgo from the service line. Micheletto against three blockers. Beautiful defensive play. No lift called, but wait, now there is a violation. I think it's a center line violation against Fenerbahce. So Hassan Yesel Budak sliding to make that second contact ended up underneath the net on the Trentino side. You can take a look at it here. And yeah, that looks to be a good call. I think he did interfere with the Trentino sideline. So Lavia back to serve. Six serving seven. Really good pass right there. Hidalgo out of the back row. That ball a little bit under set, but a smart reset into the block. Toy out of the back row. Tipped, kept alive by Zinger. Micheletto, good defensive positioning by Hidalgo to pick that one up. Toy, good run down by Lavia, but he's out of the offense. Micheletto, deep cross court, and no touch called initially, but it looked pretty clear to me that that ball did deflect off the block. Micheletto cannot believe it, so we'll definitely see a challenge here from Trentino. And I expect them to win it. Let's take a look. Yep, absolutely. Definitive on that replay right there. Caught a good piece of the hands of the block. I'm kind of surprised that one wasn't caught live, but the challenge system gets it right. We are tied up at seven. Lavia going with the flat float serve, and a good one taking Fenerbahce out of system. Smart off-speed choice by Unver. Tried to wipe it off the block on the way out of bounds, but did not catch the hands. So Trentino takes the lead after being down two. They've won three points in a row. It's a lead at 8-7. And smart serving there from Daniele Lavia. Switching it up and putting the float serve on the Hidalga. This time going back with a jump spinner and misses it short into the top tape. 
interesting choices there from the service line all the way around. You just had success with the float serve. Not totally sure why you would go away from it, especially if it results in an error. Here's Syed, who already has an ace in this match. Perfect pass there from Kaziski. To here out of the middle, cross body. Could not be kept alive by Toy. Good set there by Spertoli. And you might say, like, well, Rob, that ball has passed through about the three meter line. How is that a perfect pass? Well, it's because the setter, Spertoli, still had four options offensively. Setters at this high of a level can easily run the middle from that position. Spiritually did right there. Toy is rejected out of the back row. Vote to here closes it down with Kaziski there as well. And the Trentino block has come back to life here midway through the second. That one, I think, might have gotten both guys. I think Kaziski may have funneled that one off his right hand straight into to here. And he had the honor of putting it back to the floor on Fenerbahce's side. Timeout from the hosts trailing 8 10. And just like the first set, Trentino used their blocking prowess to create a little bit of separation midway through. Alessandro Micheletto serving for Trentino on your right. Cuts that one short handle really nicely by Hidalgo and crushed out of the middle cross body. Good rip right there for Emre Batur. That's a good delivery from Kaya and a perfect first ball side out achieved by Fenerbahce out of timeout. Here's Kaya back to serve. Good blocking rotations here for Fenerbahce. But they don't get to use it there as that left handed jump spin serve missed with the top tape. Here's to here, a very capable server. Tight pass right there, reversed all the way to the right side, and Unver with a good wrist away swing. To flex off the block and just out of the reach of the defense. And that one rotation, or at least, well, Trentino doesn't really have this problem. Man, look at that replay right between Kaczynski's arms and maybe even off his head. But most teams who have a traditional opposite in their lineup have one rotation where the outside hitter and the opposite are switched which wing they attack on. Some teams struggle to get out of that rotation. Fenerbahce did it the first time right there. Beautiful take down the line. Unver out of the backcourt is kept alive again. Lavia high off the fingertips, good defensive positioning. Toy off speed, Zanger makes the play, but right on the net. Now Kaziski with the off speed, kept alive by the pancake play of Hidalgo. Toy got the fingertips of the block on its way out of bounds. Really smart choice by number 15 in blue and gold, catching up to that surprisingly fast transition ball. And you kind of saw it from Kaziski in set one where he hit a ball into the upper deck of this stadium. Toy did it right there, the exact same thing. But the intent was to get the fingertips of the block and he got it. So probably the best rally of the match right there. It goes to Fenerbahce and they tie it up at 11. Normally home crowds, really anywhere in European volleyball, but especially in Turkey, are such an advantage for the home side. This one definitely limited, so Fenerbahce are working to manufacture their own their own energy, and that'll help right there. A triple block shuts down Alessandro Micheletto out of the pipe, and Fenerbahce retakes the lead. Looks like Metin Toy got most of that one. Yeah, good disciplined three-man block right there from Fenerbahce. No space in between all six of those arms. And they're serving again. Kaziski slowed down by the block, back to the Trentino side. Kaziski again, beautiful dig by Yesel Buda. Toy blocked, covered. 
Toy again, tried to slice one sharp down the line. A little bit off speed, but missed it just a little bit short. Definitely a tough play, but at least you would want to make Trentino play that ball. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't hate that choice. He tried to cut one wrist away down the line. Just missed the execution. And spared to lead back to serve for Trentino. Now tied up once again at 12. Good pass. Toy, what a dig down the line by Zinger. Wow. <laughs> Good awareness there. Emre Batsuer staying up at the net, even though he knew a free ball was coming over. The mistake there from Trentino, sending it right on top of the net. I think that was Laviola. There wasn't really much more he could have done. Batsuer says, thank you very much. But earlier in that rally, that was an unbelievable dig down the line by Julian Zinger. Kaziski slowed down by the block again. Fenerbahce's defense has really improved. Hidalgo again high off the fingertips. Outstanding transition defense to offense from Fenerbahce. Really taking a page out of Trentino's book. They have done such a good job adjusting their block and defense in this set to slow down Trentino slightly. And they're taking advantage when they get those opportunities in transition. Kaziski slowed down by the block again, but this time Unver just barely unable to make a diving play. Here's Kaziski. Good pass. Missed it out of bounds, out of the middle. Syed tried to tag the sideline in position five. And it looked to me like he missed it wide and not touched by the block. So a missed opportunity there for Fenerbahce off a pretty good pass. And Trentino has tied it up at 14 once again. Exactly the competitive battle here in the second set that we expected. Passed well off the net by Hidalgo. He'll probably get an out-of-system swing here. Good high flat shot down the line off the fingertips of the block. And out of the reach of a diving spare to lead. Beautiful atonement swing by Hidalgo after he struggled to receive that ball. But the courage to challenge that block, and he gets the favorable deflection off the hand of Pedrashin and, and out of play. Fenerbahce back up by one. Toy looked like he tossed that jump serve toss too far out in front of him and missed it out of bounds. And I'd be willing to bet that there is a very interested Perugia roster watching this match from Italy right now. With their match this week canceled, these are the two teams vying for their spot that Perugia currently has a top pool E. Perugia still has to play both of these teams, Fenerbahce and Trentino, again before the fourth round of Champions League is said and done. So. There's some very interesting scouting being done. Hidalgo with a massive opportunity on his serve right here. 16-15, needing some insurance. A very dangerous server at all times. Trentino well out of system here. Micheletto against three big blockers. And he puts it away in position six as it looked like the Fenerbahce block. Some of them pulled their hands away. Yes, I had signaling right there. He took his hands away, not trying to get used off his fingertips, but... Nicoletto instead say, okay, I don't need your fingertips. I've got the court instead. 16 all. Float serve again from Labia, handled pretty well by Hidalgo. This is Unver on the left side, off speed, kept alive. Nicoletto for the lead, deep down the line. And called out of bounds initially, but we might have a challenge on this. I thought that was in on the end line at a first glance. Trentino will use a challenge to take a look at if this ball caught a piece of the end line. This is a very big play to break a 16-16 tie. That ball is, wow, what's the call? In, in is the call. Wow, it does not get much closer than that. And Fenerbahce is not happy about this. Hidalgo, the captain, talking to our up official, claiming that you could see space on the replay between that ball and the end line, but I don't think you could. 
I wish we could get a look at it again, but I did not see any of that teal colored space, teal the color on the floor outside of the court. I didn't see any teal between the white end line and the yellow volleyball. So I think you've got to call that ball in at that point. Fenerbahce not happy about that call. Trentino takes the lead 17-16. Gotta have this point if you're Fenerbahce. Toy out of the back row. Power tip down the line played by Zinger. Micheletto again into the chest of Toy down the line and to the floor. Another missed opportunity for Fenerbahce off a pretty good pass. They have passed the ball largely pretty well. That is a beautiful wrist away swing by Micheletto down the line. You have got to run your offense as efficiently as possible if you're Fenerbahce as long as you can pass the ball well enough. Your side out rate has to be extremely high if you're going to keep up with a team like Trentino. Timeout Fenerbahce, 16-18, 7 for 2. And I just love listening to these these sidelines when they're all speaking English together so I can really understand what the, the unique and detailed things they're talking about in the middle of a match. You hear their coach Castellani talking about the way they're going to set up their defense. And I think Fenerbahce has been really good in defensive positioning in this match, like filling those deep seams like along the end line to run down the block touches and picking up off speed. And he's moving some pieces around there to make sure nothing hits the floor. And Hidalgo echoing the same sentiment. Toy out of the back row, absolutely unloading down the line. What a bomb by Metin Toy. And Sanger doing a nice job hanging in there. But I don't believe anybody in the world is digging this ball back into play. So important point there for Fenerbahce out of the timeout. They do not want to go down two sets to none and some crucial points coming up. Syed catches up to another toss that was too far out in front of it but can't keep it in bounds. Trentino leads by two, looking for some insurance. That ball barely kept alive. Free ball coming here for Trentino. But it actually was sent out of bounds by Hidalgo just long. I thought Zenger might throw his hands at that one briefly. And I think he's laughing about that exact same thing with his sideline. Stake there for Fenerbahce, all started with a pretty bad pass of a very difficult serve. And Micheletto, always threatening, goes back to the line again. Another tough pass, overpass directly to Trentino. Kaziski, what a beautiful defensive play. Kaziski again, this time off the block, and it deflects out of the reach of Hidalgo. And now a four-point lead for Fenerbahce. This is so, or for Trentino, excuse me, this is so scary for Fenerbahce. Unable to get out of this rotation, already down a set. And now in comes off the bench Yasin Luati, number four in blue and gold. But he replaces Salvador Hidalgo. So usually throughout this year for Fenerbahce, it has been Luati and Hidalgo, the two starting outside hitters. But now Luati, Luati the Olympic gold medalist of France, into the lineup for the first time in a very difficult spot. He's going to have to try and receive a Micheletto jump serve right away. Unver good, reset into the block. Toy high off the fingertips, Micheletto runs it down. Kaziski chisels through a high seam in the block and down on the Fenerbahce side again. And Fenerbahce is really missing some firepower on the wings right now. I, I don't know if I've seen Izet Unver take a full swing at a ball in this entire match. Just about everything has been off speed. And that's just really limiting their offense right now, in my opinion. So they're bringing Uati. They're still struggling to get out of this rotation. Unver again, this time down the line, handled easily by Zenger. Transition opportunity here. Lavi out of the back row. Good defense by Luati. And Luati out of the pipe is rejected by uh, Dahir, I believe. Got most of that one. 
and all of the air has been sucked out of this building. Trentino has totally taken the momentum back and a six point lead. It was 18-17, now 23-17. This rotation has been such a problem for Fenerbahce. And another stuff block. Oh my goodness, vote to hear one on one. What a read. Shuts down Emre Batur one on one and you can hear a pin drop in this gym in Istanbul right now. 24-17. Absolute masterclass in serving and blocking from Micheletto and Trentino, even though he finally misses that one out of bounds. With the season perhaps hanging in the balance for both these teams, teams in Champions League, how important will that service run right there be in terms of the entire European competition? We will see. Set point number two for Trentino. Micheletto this time in the D-ball position, out of position one, and the left-hander tags the sideline. Beautiful swing right there. And, uh, man, I'm almost just as speechless as this Fenerbahce crowd. It was 18 to 17, about uh, 30 seconds ago, it seems like. And now Trentino has a comfortable two sets to none lead, and they, they look, looked dominant there. 25-18, the final score in set number two. The run that Trentino was able to go on to create separation in that late in that second set was absolutely amazing. Here's another look at set point. Micheletto now on the right side. Never get tired of seeing left-handers hit on the right side. He pounds it cross-body to the line. But man, that... That run that Trentino just went on could be a season-defining point sequence for both of these teams if Fenerbahce is unable to make a miraculous reverse sweep comeback. We will see if they can start to do so in set number three in just a moment. Stay tuned for more great European volleyball. Good look at the statistics there from the second set. Fenerbahce only 19% in reception, and that is not good enough if you're going to side out and keep up with this Fenerbahce offense. Even though they were so good through the first like two thirds of the set, they just could not get Alessandro Micheletto off the line. And Trentino went on a miraculous run to take that second set 25 to 18. So Trentino looking for a sweep to make their chances of advancing to the quarterfinal round of the CEV Champions League very promising. Fenerbahce conversely fighting for their tournament life. I'm Rob St. Clair, set number three is live. Fenerbahce receiving on your right and an overpass absolutely thumped to the floor by Marco Pedrashinen saying thank you very much. You don't get many easier kills than that. So now Fenerbahce looks to be back to their usual starting duo of outside hitters, Yassin Luati and Salvador Hidalgo, both in the match. 
Toy high off the hands of the block, back to the Fenerbahce side. Hidalgo, beautiful quick tempo to the outside, and he puts it away through a seam and the block and down, and that is what Fenerbahce is able to do with both Luwati and Hidalgo on the court, along with Betsy Toy on the right side, as they can run that offense so fast and have threatening players in all areas of the court. Podrashin in again. Beautiful swing cross body. Quick delivery from Ricardo Spertoli. And I'm I'm confused by the, this, these lineup choices from Daniel Castellani. If you see Luati is healthy, which he clearly is. He came in late in set number two, and here he is starting set number three. Why didn't he start this match? No offense to Izad Unver, but they just Fenerbahce lost a lot of much-needed firepower without both Luati and Hidalgo on the floor. There's another beautiful rip by Hidalgo, and he knew it immediately. Screaming as he attacked that ball. Puts it away down the line. Great start for Fenerbahce, two for two inside out. After that uh, initial overpass, of course. Here's Toy. So you see Trentino that time, and we've talked about, so they have three outside hitters basically in the three wing positions plus the libero. So they have four passing capable players on the floor in every rotation. That time they chose to shield Kaczynski, let Micheletto and Lavia be the passers. That ball by Ahmed Tumer, number seven in blue and gold, into the match at middle blocker. I think that he's in for Syed actually, and that ball initially called inbounds on the sideline, but Trentino wants a challenge. They thought it was out. So we will take a look. goodness it, it doesn't get any closer than that but it's the same thing as that call we saw in the last set I really think that ball is in and it's called in you can't see any clear separation of that blue floor coloring between the white sideline and the yellow volleyball so kind of got no choice but to call it in at that point in is the call Fenerbahce ties it up at three two mayor the middle blocker remains in the front court off the bench in this set Maybe Hidalgo got slowed down by that delay by the challenge. And misses that serve short. We're our down official talking to the scorer's table here. Not exactly sure what the what the confusion is. I didn't see any substitutions. We just saw the one challenge, so looks like everything's in order, and Daniele Lavia will serve for Trentino on the left side of your screen. Going with the float serve again, working on Hidalgo. Toy out of the back row is clamped again. To hear and Nicoletto combine for the huge block, and that is as big of a block as you'll see in all of Europe. Nicoletto, two meters 11. To here, two meters and three. And he might be even a little bit taller than that. That is a brick wall of the Italians in white. Lavia serving again. Repeat set to Toy and two step blocks in a row. Nicoletto again with to here there as well. And I had a feeling that Mohamed Kaya, Mohamed Kaya excuse me, was going to go right back to Metin Toy on the repeat set. Unfortunately for him, Trentino also saw that coming. And now once again, Khan Grubu is the backup opposite. It will come into the match for Toy. And in addition, we will have a Fenerbahce timeout. Yeah, just perfect positioning by Micheletto there. There is a lot of wine for Toy to be swinging at. I'm surprised he's not able to take advantage of that. So it appears that Toy will go to the bench and the young left-hander Grubers will come in to try and provide a spark. So we will see if that could be the fix for Fenerbahce.
No stretch go, Lisa Knotts for Trentino. No problem so far. Leading two sets to none and six to three here in the third in Turkey. Not a good pass by Hidalgo on the float serve again. Luati's first swing of the match, and he is stuff blocked again. Three blocks in a row for Trentino. Micheletto coming over from the left side to complete the triple block that time, and it was perfect. Yep, looked like Micheletto got most of that one. Smart serving from Lavia again, like just continuing to keep the ball in bounds. Let his block do the work. Good quick swing there from Luati, actually kept alive by Trentino. Now Luati again, rolled four to four and a beautifully located off-speed roll shot right into the middle of the court. Gets a much needed point for Fenerbahce and they are out of that rotation. Here's Ahmet Tumer, the 20 year old. Two meters even, number seven in blue and gold. A pretty good jump spin server. Whoops. <laughs> uh, I think it's fair to call that one just a bit outside. That is probably the most classic commentator's curse of all time. I see he's a pretty good jump spin server, and then he launches one into orbit. Here's Micheletta. Luatii, deep cross court, kept alive. And Hidalgo just barely unable to run it down. Trentino is flexing every one of their different muscles right now. This time a beautiful defensive play by Micheletto, stabbed at by Lavia. They're just so good at bettering the ball. Every time a guy needs to make a contact just to get Trentino into a slightly better situation, all seven of their players are consistently able to do that. And there, Kaziski takes advantage offensively. Just such high-level volleyball, contact to contact. And there is another rocket of an ace serve from Alessandro Micheletto. And Fenerbahce has not figured Micheletto out from the service line. 10-4. to four. I got to tell you guys, this match feels eerily similar to the last match that these two teams played. Trentino beat Fenerbahce three sets to none in Trento in December. The fir that first set was very close. Trentino winning at 25 to 21, but they were, they were up pretty much the whole way. The second set, Trentino actually trailed 21-17 before winning 25-22. So they went on an unbelievable run to end the set. We saw the exact same thing here in the second. And then in the third, Trentino went up 21 to nine before eventually winning 25-17. That was in the previous match back in December. And Right now, a 10-4 to 4 lead. Uh, both of these teams have unfortunately seen this movie before. Fenerbahce not trying to repeat that. Otherwise, it is possible that their Champions League hopes will be over. Good time out there, forcing Micheletto into the service area. And yeah, we encourage you all to join the conversation about the CEG Champions League online. Use the hashtag SuperMOTW for Super Match of the Week. Hashtag CLVolleyM. Champions League Volley Men's. Make sure you follow the CEV on Instagram at CE Volleyball. Good rip right there by Dehir out of the middle after a beautiful delivery from Spertoli again. Yeah, beautiful. I love that's a good look at it from above. I don't usually love that view, but you can see the spacing uh, laterally and in relation to the net of Tahir versus Spertoli as that ball comes a little bit off the net. Nice looking play there. Rushed out of the middle. My goodness, what a bomb by Emery Batur. Cross body, that's a three meter line, if not even a little bit inside of it. So great work there inside out offense from Fenerbahce. Started with a very good pass, but they still trail by five. With work to do here. Luati now into the starting lineup. See if he can put some pressure on from the service line. Ball handled really easily by Zinger. Lavia out of the back row. Back to the Trentino side. Going to have another opportunity at this. Lavia again dug by Luati. Third opportunity for Trentino. Kaziski crushed off the Libero's platform and now finally out of bounds. <laughs> Kaziski flexing his bicep and pointing to it through the net. A little bit of friendly banter there between himself and uh, Hassan Yesu Budak. 
Turkus Libero. Yeah, he was there. He was definitely there on the three meter line, sharp cross court, but too much heat from Kaziski. And I uh, love that playful conversation between the guys after that point. Good rip there by Gurdus on the right side. And the young, springy 20 year old left hander has come in for Metin Toy. And we'll see how much he can contribute in an area where Fenerbahce really needs him. Seven serving 12. Good run again. Another beautiful delivery from Spertoli to one of his middles. This time Pedrashin in from about the three meter line. And Tumer is, is it's not a bad block, but he's just a half a step late because that run is so difficult to predict and it's difficult to respect that. But an offense like Trentino's who has weapons everywhere, that looked to be a foot fault from Kaziski, but missed out of bounds anyway. But when an offense like Trentino's has weapons on all three wings like the way they do, and they can run the middle from the three meter line or even a little bit outside of that, they just become that much more difficult to slow down. If there are so many more things in their offense that you have to respect as a block in more situations. Ooh, that is pretty close too. Uh, I believe that was Gurubu's on the serve. Yes, it was. Yeah, looking at that deep corner position five with the hooking left-handed jump spin serve, but he missed it out of bounds and no challenge from Fenerbahce. Here's Pedrashin. Perfect pass there. Hidalgo is roofed again. What a stuff block by Daniele Lavia. Wow. Trentino's leading blocker in Champions League coming into this match now has another one. Maybe that ball set a little bit too tight. But Lavia's blocking prowess on both wings has been so impressive throughout this season. Grubu's out of the back row, sprays that one out of bounds. Not good hand contact whatsoever. So another missed opportunity inside out for Fenerbahce. Pedrashna continues to serve and... Now Izet Tumer comes back in, this time for Salvador Hidalgo. Just to make sure that Fenerbahce can stay in system, but it's 16 to 8. And again, this is looking remarkably similar to the last match that these two teams played. Where Trentino opened up a massive lead in the third after going up two sets to none. That ball hit out of bounds again, this time by Tumer, off a little bit of an underset ball. And Fenerbahce just has no answers in side out offense right now. 17 to 8. And once again, you can hear a pin drop in this arena here in Istanbul. Good block touch there. Micheletto rescues it somehow. It's way too easy for Trentino, and they terminate it in transition with Vota here out of the middle. He's at Unver down by nine points. He's just got to take a full swing at some of these balls. That roll shot that he just gave to Trentino was more or less a free ball. Just way too easy. He's got to better on in this situation. Now Pedrashin in 10-point lead. Tries to cut that one short and misses it a little bit too short into the top tape. And I cannot believe the parallels that this match is already drawing, or drawing as it perhaps reaches its conclusion. To the last match that these two teams played, it was really remarkably similar. Set one was close, but Trentino led by two or three points throughout. Trentino had a huge run at the end of the second, and they have opened up a huge lead in the third. Very, very similar. To hear again, the middle has been absolutely unstoppable, and that was also a story in that first match between these two teams. And again, no Stresco Lisinac for Trentino today, but no problem. Vote to hear has played really well. 19 to 9. Luati blocked again, but just out of bounds wide of the Fenerbahce sideline. Needless to say, this would be a mountain to climb for Fenerbahce to make this comeback, especially against a team of Trentino's caliber. But if you're going to do it, you've really got no choice but to unleash from the service line every opportunity. So no point here to not be completely aggressive. That was way too easy. To hear again, slowed down by the block, back to the Trentino side. To hear again, this time cross body on the gap set and to the floor. 
Nice setting from Spertoli, really getting his middles involved here late. And the ball control on the first contact in service and transition has really been essential to that. Yeah, just perfect, perfect offense right there. Found a great piece of separation space in between the blockers. Micheletto, really good pass there from Luati. And crushed down the line, but into the antenna, I believe. Yes, that ball missed out of bounds by Yassine Luati into the antenna. Another point for Trentino, and now it is 21 to 10. Nicoletto missed it out of bounds, and that was the run that got Trentino the lead that they ended up having to win the second set after separating from 18 17. Eleven serving twenty-one. The setter Muhammad Kaya back to serve for Fenerbahce. That was pretty close as well, but looked to me to be just long and no no challenge coming. I think from Coach Castellani. And unfortunately, I think at this point this match is just a formality. Twenty-two to eleven. I hate to predict it at this point, but I don't believe this comeback will be possible. And another stuff block right there. Pedrashinen and I believe Kaziski shut down Luati on the right side in rotation one. That ball definitely set a little bit too low. Well, low and maybe inside. He challenges the seam and the double block from Trentino is perfect. Now 23 to 11. Domination, absolute domination from Trentino here in the third. Grubu's the left-hander on the left side, wants a block touch, and he gets it. Uh, awarded by the officials, touched off the block, so Fenerbahce does get out of rotation one. Overpassed, good serve there from Luati. Gurbu's down the line off the block of Kaziski and out of bounds. Good point on serve there for Fenerbahce. Not going away without a fight, but Trentino still only needs two more points in their side out. Coming up next for both of these teams, Fenerbahce will take on Khan of France on February 8th. At least coming up next in terms of Champions League. Kaziski there, good deep swing off the block and down deep in position five, and now match points coming up. A comfortable amount of match points, to say the least, for Itas Trentino, as they look for a second consecutive three-nothing sweep of their Pool E Turkish rivals. Spirtoli has the honors. Goes after that one, misses it short, but why not? Uh, next up for Trentino, at least in Champions League, will be an all-Italian battle with Perugia, which will be enormous. That'll be on February 10th. So definitely look forward to that one. Match point number two for Trentino. Rescued by Spertoli. But a pretty good opportunity here in transition for Fenerbahce. Unver, high flat off the block and out of bounds. So another match point saved. Fenerbahce back within single digits. But again, all Trentino needs is one side out off the serve of Emre Batur. Lavia on the left, Kaziski on the right. And I think that's an ace serve right down the line. Yes, it is. Beautiful wrist away serve right on the sideline in position five. And Trentino says, well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> you can have that one. That's, that's an absolutely perfect serve. And yes, it is the, the outside of the sideline at that. So another match point saved. However, it was only a matter of time that serve missed into the net and Trentino have come to Turkey and have swept Fenerbahce in Istanbul. What a performance from Itas Trentino. Absolutely dominant. And they are still very much alive for the championship of Pool E. They improved to 3-1 on the stand on the season in Champions League. 
25-20, 25-18, 25-16, the final score. And last year's runners-up are looking awfully good to advance to the quarterfinal stage as it stands right now. Fenerbahce drops to one and three, and it is almost impossible for a three-loss team to get second place in the pool and make it out to the quarterfinals, but it doesn't mean Fenerbahce's going to stop fighting. They still play Khan and Perugia. Well-deserved well MVP award for Ricardo Spertoli, the Trentino setter. Good for him. He ran an absolutely outstanding offense today. But Trentino have come to Turkey, and they have taken a very convincing win. Congratulations to them, and thank you all very much for watching. It's been my pleasure to bring you this Champions League match on a Wednesday evening. My name is Rob St. Clair. Make sure you get in on the action online. Subscribe here to the CEV YouTube channel. Follow the CEV on Instagram at CE Volleyball. Use the various hashtags in your conversations about the 2022 Champions League. And also turn in, tune into the European Volleyball Show, which we do on the CEV channel every week with various guests. We preview the Super Match of the Week. Uh, this morning we had a video with Matt Anderson of Perugia come out where we were talking about this match. That was really interesting. So look forward to that on, here on the YouTube channel every week. But until next time, signing off from Istanbul, Rob St. Clair, thank you very much for watching. I'm very happy. I'm very happy because uh, we knew that uh, here in Turkey is uh, always difficult playing in a, a very difficult gym uh, and uh, against a, a very good team. So we are very proud of, of these results. Thank you very much. Thank you.